Welcome back uh, to another uh, episode of uh, Big Bang Theory RL. And this is the life of a real nerd along the lines of uh, Sheldon Cooper and uh, Leonard Hofstetter. And this is why it's called Big Bang Theory RL. I think it's Big Bang Theory. It's the TV show. And this is the real life version of it. So, yay, away we go. <laughs> uh, you can now see, I can actually see in my monitor now, I can clearly see the TVs, the monitors. So that means I can do demonstrations now, and I'll show you what I watch on TV. This is the, this is the the one on top is my is my regular TV. This is uh, uh, goes to uh, the research desk, the, the the primary system. I do have uh, two tablets, one or two phones. The one I'm working on now, what I'm working on now. I have two tablets over here, uh, but this is going to bring me to my. Uh, <coughs> My entertainment, if you will, primarily on Firefox, and uh, you can see back there. Uh, I, one of my one of my uh, typical shows is Quintus TV. I have uh, instead of using uh, instead of using uh, um, the notifications and the su subscriptions, what I found a long time ago doesn't work properly, and so I use my own uh, my own TV guide. And it takes me to where I need to go, and this is it here. This is uh, Clintus TV. This is one of the ones I just finished watching today, right now, uh, before I uh, got on the uh, before I uh, vlogged. And uh, today's not going so well, and well, in terms of the vlogging, that I don't really have much of anything to say, <laughs> uh, other than this. It, it, vlogging can be a challenge. It, the conversation has to be there. And uh, I was going to vlog yesterday because it's the uh, 29th today. And I haven't vlogged uh, since the 27th. Uh, the, the conversation just wasn't there. My mind was elsewhere. And it still is kind of elsewhere. But uh, uh, what are you going to do? Uh, that's kind of the way it is. I did do, fo I went food shopping. Uh, I, I walked to go food shopping. I got what I needed. Uh, the prices are getting uh, uh, more and more expensive. So the question is now, uh, what's kind of next uh, for the day? And I'm going to be calling my parents to go over there. I might vlog a little bit more over there. I might not. I don't know how I'm going to do today's vlog. Uh, whether I should do it in one long segment or should I break it up or you know, I don't know yet. We'll we'll see when in Japan, but. Kind of wanted to do this just to sort of show, uh, to see the TV working here. I can actually bring up a, a video. A video. Oh, there we go. Very easy to do. There it is. There. Uh, everybody's had their Christmas. Uh, the first Christmas is has come and gone. It. Most people just take a couple days uh, for Christmas. Oh, there is, a, there is there is a Christmas Eve is season that begins kind of right by right, right uh, after Thanksgiving, uh, but my season lasts until uh, just about uh, well the nineteenth and twentieth of uh, of January is uh, when uh, my Christmas ends because uh, you have the January seventh on the east for the Eastern uh, Christians is my Christmas, then there's the twelfth days of Christmas. That gives you the 19th, and you have uh, one or two days to sort of cool off, and, <laughs> and that's it for the season. And uh, it's not until the next season doesn't pop around. Well, not till next year, but, but uh, we have many festivals, uh, including the Passover festival. 
Uh, the early Christian church still celebrates Passover, and ironically enough, uh, this may not be known to a lot of people, but uh, Hanukkah, uh, the, what, what, what uh, many refer to the Festival of Light, is basically the Book of the Maccabees. Uh, and it is still within the Eastern tradition to celebrate the uh, Maccabees, because you, not only are you celebrating the Maccabees, but you're celebrating all, all the prophets of the uh, Old Testament in January. Including myself, my, my, my namesake, uh, my real namesake in terms of uh, uh, we are Cyborg Elf on the internet. Uh, but the human half is Daniel, and so we celebrate Prophet Daniel actually coming up uh, on the 30th. So t tomorrow uh, tomorrow will be my uh, the, we'll be honoring uh, Prophet Daniel, who is my name. Uh, oh. My eyes are a little sore and this would be it, it, this is a part of church in, in many ways is, is not something simply a place you go to uh, 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 in the path that I follow church is your sort, sort of it's, it's like like a like a house like your own house so I have my house here I have my parents house and you feel very comfortable in it just the way you would in your own house this is sort of the nature of church as you become part of the family of God and uh, and sort of develop that relationship with, with within uh, the sort of well, it doesn't have to necessarily be physical boundaries but it, 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 it there are definitely there are definitely physical boundaries in terms of the placements as where you are uh, when you not worship but uh, develop your relationship with Christ, with God, with uh, the family. And this includes the mother of God, which in many cases, well, in some cases, is not uh, specifically or definitively uh, identified uh, because they're simply tossed off to the side of some of the uh, evangelicals I've talked to. Well, we want to focus directly on Christ. And so... Uh, because the Catholics never really considered uh, Saint Mary the mother of God, they don't give her that title. Uh, she's kind of pushed off to the side, and the focus is, is just with Christ. But the problem is, is that <laughs> if you disrespect the mother, then this will come into play as well uh, in terms of your assessment. When you have that, there's that last judgment, the conversation. As okay, how did you live your life? And this is in the Bible, and you know we have the goats on the left and the other sheep on the right. And uh, went to the goats and said, "You clothed me not, you fed me not." Uh, and off to the, to the left hand path they went to, towards darkness, and they when they sort of they pleaded and questioned. Lord, Lord, when did we not clothe you? When did, you? when did we not feed you? And he said, turned, didn't answer initially, but went to the right and said, you clothed me, you fed me, uh, to the sheep on the right. And they said, Lord, Lord, when did we clothe you? When did we feed you? And he returns and says, that you do to the least of men, you do to me. And this is so. Wait, 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 look at sort of the charity of Christmas, the 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 the, the giving nature of Christmas. This is the fundamentals of Christianity. The fundamentals of Christianity is giving without the expectation of receiving. In other words, uh, if you're going to a charity that celebrates somebody, it's the charity event holder. And you see all these names and so on and so forth. That's not charity. Because there is an expectation of receivership, of recognition for that charitable act. The charitable act, the, the, the true philanthropy is done without the expectation of uh, being compensated for the deeds you've done, and then this is this is how philanthropy under early Christian in early Christianity differs from that of karma. Karma, there's always a sort of a yin and the yang, if you will. That's where it comes into 
where you balance out the evil deeds that you do uh, in your life with good deeds. And therefore, you are not punished by the universe uh, for the evil deeds because you've somehow, in your mind, justified that you've worked these things out. At least you hope to, anyways. Uh, early Christian, Christian f philanthropy, and now it has to be titled as such because there are multiple forms of philanthropy, but the original form, uh, which came out from Christ, did not have any form of comp compensation. There was no expectation of reward afterwards. And it was, in the terms of the right-hand path, selfless. Now, the difference between... I talk... I, I talk now the conversation is coming. It takes a while sometimes to think of what to say, but the conversation is coming now. And it's about the path, the Christian path. And I've talked about, and you'll hear me talk about more about this. The Christian path is a lot like what you hear about Buddhism and Hinduism. This is what the early Christians were like. And typically, if you look into the Eastern understandings of God of the interactions with the beyond, with the spiritual. What you're seeing is an understanding that it's not simply enough to do uh, uh, just rote things. There's a path. There's a there's a journey to be taken up. in your life to achieve or to get to the goal of the next. So our interactions spiritually are not passive, but they're active. You are actively involved in your own salvation. <coughs> and this is done by choosing the path you, you, you want to lead in your life. You either follow a selfless path the path, the right-hand path, or you travel a selfish path. path. That's the left hand. The self, the selfish path, the ones on the left, the, the, the goats on the left, uh, leads towards darkness and damnation. The right-hand path leads to enlightenment and God. Now, the thing is, is that The most of the religions after early Christianity develop a form of theology. The theology is why you do what you do. That disconnects the faithful, the, the, the people of the congregation or that religion from the creator and says, you can't become part of the creator. You're not good enough. You can become an angel, you can become part of, the, part of the creation, you become one with the universe, but that's as far as you're going to go. It is only the early Christian path, the, the path of Christ, described in the Gospel. Deny thyself, pick up your cross, and follow me. And then this is Christ describing a path. And as a path of selflessness, it says directly there that you will be connected to, to Christ. You know, and that, and because Christ is God, you, in, in, in turn, you're, you're connected to the entire family. This includes the mother of God, the apostles, and everything else. So it's not as the Hindus or Buddhists believe, where you take the right hand path, which is selfless. Again, they're talking about selflessness. And you wind up simply being part of the creation and, and, and who you are, your individuality, dissolves into nothing that you become part of the background noise. This is the nirvana uh, uh, of Buddha, the nirvana of Hinduism. These things uh, are the things of the right-hand path 
for those who are not early Christian. And they, the early Christian, Christians who took the, the, the right-hand path are very few and far between. It, there is not a lot known. They are, I found these, these, this understanding uh, in some hidden manuscripts and, and text. I have not brought them out yet. I am working on bringing them out. But research, you know, so I, I spent, you see this desk behind me, I'm here always at my research desk. It's hours. The work is hours at a time, day after day, and because the information, the pieces that you, you are looking for and might get every time you go out and do your research are few and far between. They're, and they're also very tiny. And they're they're kind of like a pixel if you if you're watching the video here and you know one thing about about the TV screens and, and, and the, the the monitors you know that oh you want uh, high definition well why do you want high definition as opposed to standard definition what well, has more pixels what does more pixel get pixels give you it gives you more information it gives you a clearer picture all you have to do is understand this go down to um, Minecraft which is eight bit graphics. And you see the blockiness of it. You don't actually see the the, the, the fine point definition because uh, the pixels are large enough that the definition is washed out. That's 8-bit graphics. Uh, go up to 16-bit, 24-bit, uh, 32-bit. Follow the evolution of graphics in these, in these gaming consoles. And you begin to understand what they're talking about in terms of how the pixelization matters. The higher the pixels, the more pixels that you have per square inch, per square centimeter, or however you define that square, the area of the square, uh, this is what gives you the crispness of the picture. So imagine the information that you're collecting is a pixel, right? You get that. So you'll maybe watch an hour to two hours worth of documentaries, uh, from different people. These are often often lectures. So you're sitting there for an hour to two hours listening to a lecture and you're picking up maybe one pixel. You go out and do another lecture for two, three hours. Now you're talking about between four and seven hours worth of work. You pick up a second pixel. Well, how many pixels do you need to get like this, this pixel here, a 1080p? The horizontal pixelization is you're looking at uh, just about, just about 2K or 2,000 pixels per square inch. This is the uh, this is the, uh, the 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 high definition, the 1080p. You take the uh, number of the vertical and you take the number of the uh, horizontal, and that gives you the uh, you multiply them together. And that gives you the square area, uh, and that gives you sort of the pixels per square inch. You're definitely in the thousands. So if you're picking up per day one or two pixels, how long does it take you uh, to get up to a clarity a clarity of picture of let's say a hundred or two hundred or three hundred or even a thousand, getting up to this high le level of re resolution that we have now, and it takes a long time. And so what happens is getting the information, particularly when you find new things, it takes it does take a couple of years to sort of uh, figure out what you ended up having, what you end up having, making sure that what you do, what what you have is indeed correct, or at least from what you can see of this, because you can't see everything. There are always going to be bits and pieces of information that are missing, and then eventually getting it out to the public. And well, we've got to close the question is, well, how do you get it up? What, what methods, what uh, means of sort of disseminating or putting out the information is there? What distribution methods are there? And these are the sort of the questions that sort of pop up uh, as you're doing uh, your work. Uh, and it, it, it's basically, you get up in the morning, you go to your research desk, You start your daily work, whatever the whatever you just sort of start off with, and it's random every day. Have your breakfast while you're at the research desk. Have your lunch at the research desk, and then you end up having your dinner at the research desk as well. And you finish, 
when you're too tired to continue any further, and that's when you go to bed and sort of recharge for the next day. That's the nature of research. That's what, that's what I do on a daily basis. And so what happens, people ask you, well, how do you prove this? Well, how do, how do I give you the experience that I have had with these tiny bits of pieces of information? This is my research, this is my experience here. And I'm able, I've been, I've been fortunate enough to able, that I've been able to sort of connect my observation as I go walking or as I, I walk to go food shopping. This food shopping is between a two and three hour hike depending on what I wear. The heavier the clothes I wear, particularly in, during the winters, uh, it's closer to a three hour hike. Uh, with, when I'm wearing something lighter, uh, then it's now a, uh, it can be just a, a, a two hour hike. It, it, it really fundamentally shifts between how heavy are the uh, objects I'm carrying to and from the food shop, and that will determine the time length. So I do get out to see different things. Uh, I, I spend the summer up north. I have a research facility up north now where I spend an enormous amount of time just sort of sitting there watching things and, you know, doing other forms of observation rather than just simply being okay here all the time. Here all the time is an important part. It's an important chunk. You have to go through the stuff bit by bit. And it's not necessarily like the person you're listening to in terms of listening to the lecture. You want to understand what the person is saying, why they're saying what they're saying. In other words, if they're giving you a particular view or an idea or whatever information they're giving you, how do they come to understand this? Where is their information coming from? Uh, this will actually tell you a lot of whether, as to whether or not <coughs> what you're seeing is right, is it wrong, is it biased? Where is the bias coming into? Where is their own personal experience or their own tint, their, their own perspective coming into this? And this is how you sort of start peeling back the layers and getting at the kernels of information and hopefully finding a piece a pixel that will add to your collection of pixels. And basically a library is a collection of pixels, a, collect a collection of pixel information in a variety of different forms. So this is this is kind of where we are. This is how I, kind of, I came into the Eastern understanding of things. Uh, I've lived in an Asian neighborhood in one form or another, all my life. I'm very comfortable in the Asian neighborhoods. And myself, I'm not actually European. I'm, I'm, I'm Asiatic Greek, but the, 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 and I, you know, for those of you who don't understand that Turkey was part of Greece at one point in time. And there are still a lot of Greeks there. And Turkey is part of Asia. So anyway, and, and this is where the Eastern Christianity comes in. This is where, and I think, ironically enough, this was in my backyard. I was, I, I was sort of born into the situation. But a lot of times you just sort of mull through things and, well, this is where it is. This is what I do on a daily basis. And you don't think about it. It's not until I went back and I said, oh, let me check my own backyard, my own attic to sort of see what I already have as different bits of information sort of came forward and I said, okay, I need to do more of a little bit of a, more of a search here. As I was wandering around, sort of peeing around, and sort of uh, 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 trying to figure out a direction next, when I came to an impasse, the decision was, oh, let me take a see, look what I have in my own backyard, and lo and behold, there was a whole treasure trove of information of pic or pixels that were there, and I, be I began connecting it to uh, quantum physics, to particle physics, uh, to metaphysics. And just recently, in, in uh, February uh, 2018, I was able to bring particle physics, that's the super string theory, quantum physics, and metaphysics together to extend the research beyond what it was initially there, what was initially there. And so now I'm in brand new territory. I've spent the last, oh, six, seven months trying to figure out exactly where I was and where I needed to go next in this sort of venture. You never really exactly know where you are, where things are going, but you do have some inkling, okay, 
maybe I should try this direction or maybe I should try that direction. But it's still very fuzzy, feeling, I'm not, not sure at all. And of course, when you were blind at that time, that's I was blind at that time up until just basically uh, the end of November. There's a severe restriction as to what you can and can't do. Because your impairment, well, that's what it does. It impairs your environment, impairs your ability to do uh, various different things. And so this is sort of how we end up. And now we have Christmas, the Vlogmas, until the 19th of January. Uh, there was a, supposed to be an opening theme for this, but I can't find it right now. So it's going to be the standard opening theme. Hopefully next year I'll be able to get the... Uh, the uh, the Christmas opening thing up and running and going, uh, but it's going to be standard until basically March first. Then we go to the Passover opening theme, and you'll we gotta sort of get a feel for how I come into my research and see who I am, how I approach things, and you begin to sort of you can do the assessment that I've been talking about in terms of assessing your sources as to where they fit within the information that they're providing and the quality of the information they're providing. Uh, this is how you assess, this is how you do the analysis of the information that comes into you. So this is why BTS, if you are gonna become a researcher, you're interested in becoming a researcher, this is part of it. This is part of the, the necessities and so we're going to be moving forward. I'm going to, and uh, setting up. Uh, we've already set up Cyborg Alpha TV Network. The gaming is coming next. There's also going to be uh, news is coming back. The INN the, uh, Internet News Network is coming back again. So there will be a lot more content to look forward to. Anyways, uh, I'm going to leave that here for now. I think we've got enough time. And uh, see you uh, actually for Monday's vlog. <laughs>